If you want to check out the newest addition to the Charlotte Tilbury complexion family, her airbrush flawless foundation, then please keep on watching. Hello my friends, my name is Alicia. If it's your first time here, thank you so much for stopping by. Kinky Sweat stands for my kinky hair and sweat life. I am a fitness professional who loves all things movement and beauty. And if you want to check out what I do in between the makeups, you can head over to my Instagram. Check out my daily movement musings and such. Forgive my voice, I do have a cold currently. Accumulation of events that just led me to be over taken by the germs but i said you need to strap up and film this review or more like a first impression so let's get started a huge shout out to beautylish for sending me this foundation i had no idea that they were even going to ask me if i wanted to try it the day that it launched early on charlotte's site i looked at it and i was like let me hold off because i have so many foundations and it has fragrance so i wasn't a, in a rush to drop the 44 dollars claire emailed me i was like do you want to try this foundation let me know what shades you're thinking about i was like oh well okay thank you so much claire from beautylish and the whole team just being so gracious and kind with just sending me these products that hopefully will help you guys make an informed buying decision i just want to remind you guys these videos are just for you to see products in action so you can figure out if you're going to like it if you're not going to like it you do what you want with your own money I'm not telling you that you have to buy anything, whether my response will be negative or positive, okay? So, just wanna put that out there. I also have all my other Charlotte Tilbury products on standby, so it could be like a whole Charlotte Tilbury base. I don't have the concealer. Oh, I gotta grab that, I'll grab it later. I don't wanna get up again. <sighs> so here we are, I decided to get eight warm and 7.5 neutral i don't know if that was the right decision i lost into bloomies because they actually had them for uh pre-sale couldn't buy them but they had the testers out and even the representative was like i went to the training and i don't even know what these shades are in terms of how they classify warm cool and neutral and the foundations i swatched in the store they looked so off i don't even it's gonna be very interesting. Quick fire details of the product. This foundation retails for $44. It is quite a hefty price tag. Uh, not as much as Pat's, but more expensive than let's say Anastasia's luminous foundation. What else we got here? 18 month suggested shelf life, made in Italy, one fluid ounce of product, so standard amount you get for a foundation. Here's the bottle, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's frosted glass with the rose gold metallic top, very much like to the design of her Hollywood flawless filter. So within this very like art deco type of design that a lot of her products, most of them anyway, have from her compacts and her different palettes and such. About this foundation, uh, the hashtag is flawless is a feeling. Yes, it is. Charlotte's new innovation of foundation is the secret to a flawless, poreless looking, confident complexion exclamation point. All right, so we're looking for poreless, stay all day, weightless, full coverage with a natural matte finish. You remember those? Okay. It's a hybrid magic skincare foundation for every occasion. Why? Because it contains Charlotte's magic matrix of ingredients. The magic replexium significantly reduces the appearance of wrinkles by up to 22%. That's not a high statistic, but okay. After eight weeks of use, the Moss Cell Tech number one to boost hydration up to 216% and air cool for an instant fresh feel of the skin. Charlotte has used her color artistry to create a formula to seamlessly balance your unique skin undertones and optimize your overtones. When finding your flawless shade, leave five minutes for the true color to optimize. That is very true. When I swatch these over at Bloomies, and you're gonna see here, I'm gonna just swatch my face and let them sit, excuse me, and see how these colors change, okay? I'm gonna leave my thoughts about skincare and makeup towards the end because I have a whole spiel about that. As you know, all timestamps will be down below if you wish to skip over to a specific portion of this video. For my primer, I have on the Centella Green Level Unscented Sun Protection from Purito. Purito, or I would have the Crave Beat Shield. So one of these will be my primer, and if I were to apply a foundation, it will most likely be during the day. So I rely on my sunscreen to be my primer. 7.5 and 8. So 7.5 neutral. Oh, I don't know, man. Okay, 7.5 neutral is olive for medium skin with neutral undertones. 
We got a beautiful, beautiful pump. So let's first swatch 7.5 neutral. The consistency is not too runny, not too creamy. So, oh. Okay, she said to let it sit, so that's what we're gonna do. And Ain't Warm is golden for medium skin with warm undertones. So this is Eight Warm. I'm gonna swatch 7.5 neutral again and get it further down my neck. All right, so we're gonna let that sit for five minutes. I thought while we waited for these to dry down that we take a look at some of these ingredients. Usually the first five ingredients listed on the deck are gonna be the most potent and anything else afterwards is gonna have very little to no effect, especially when it comes to skincare. We have aqua cyclopentasiloxane, my favorite, isodotacane, PEG 10 dimethicone, propanediol, polyglycerol 4, isosterate. Unfortunately, this has have fragrance as I mentioned before and I already smell it on me so that's another reason why I didn't buy the new Fenty because that Fenty foundation smell even with her first foundation she launched like a few years ago I smelled that on my face all day and I don't know if this is gonna happen the same with this I will have to go further into each of these ingredients but unfortunately the special reflexium or whatever she claims to put in here to make a difference on your skin they're so far down the ingredient list that i feel they are not going to have a significant difference on your skin even on a long period of time how are these how this is definitely not my shade it looks like eight warm might be my shade just you know whatever we could salvage from this so let's take that off we'll apply it one side sponge and the other side brush realistically though i would always apply it with the sponge because i don't want to leave a spotty shield of sun protection behind i'm gonna put more of my centella just on the spot that i wiped so it doesn't go dry all right okay Ooh, i don't know what that is. now i did see wayne's video so i'm gonna use very little or just do one pump on the back of my hand that's how much one pump dispenses and as you see texture wise is not too runny not too creamy either it has a little bit of move and groove to it let's do this side first and for the person who said this mirror is distracting i'm very sorry the mirror that does not have a double back is at home and because i am babysitting maddie this is the one i keep at her place so sorry using my dose of colors sponge that i love so much but that is some fast coverage and i didn't really use a lot of product okay doing well so far but we have to let it chill remember because if the color changes, then we have to see what it actually dries down to. Using my Zoeva 110 Face Shape Buffer Brush for my brush side, work that into the skin. It looks a little, well again, let's let's let it dry down. Let's let it, let, let's let it dry down, okay? I don't know what I was thinking with 7.5 neutral. What is wrong with me? I mean, I guess we could, for the sake of just trying it, put it on the center of my face. I'm only gonna put a very little bit, a very little, like that's it. Boop. Definitely using my sponge to blend this out. The texture is nice. I feel that it is, you know what this reminds me of? The Hourglass Vanish Seamless Liquid Foundation that nobody liked. It packs a lot of punch without you having to apply a whole lot of product and it dries down and it does say in the description natural matte and i do feel this actually is natural matte i could go a shade deeper maybe 8.5 warm but i am going to use bronzer just to even it out and i can use 7.5 neutral on the center of my face but you know i just want to see kind of where it goes color wise i'm taking a little bit more just a touch more on my sponge and going over my hyperpigmentation to get a little more coverage there. I would say this is pretty full coverage and you don't need a ton for sure because I think if you apply too much, judging from the texture now, it could look a little cakey on the skin and it could settle into any fine lines or, or crevices you have on the face. Definitely start off small and then build from there because I feel this will be a foundation that will be a little tough to take away once you get it on the skin. But it's actually very nice. Uh, again, it reminds me of the Hourglass like a whole ton. 
I could be crazy, but and you have a little bit of blending time. It doesn't dry down quickly, so you have time to zhuzh, to adjust, to go in with the sponge, go in with the brush, do whatever you need to do to make sure the texture is smooth. It's not sticky, but it definitely has a little bit of bounce left, and that's nice because I feel you can powder, but it's not satin. And I'm sure natural matte will depend on what skin type you apply this on, right? So if you're oily, maybe this will be satin, but if you're dry, this will be like matte in a bad way, you know what I mean? I'm using the Leftover uh, Foundation 7.5 just for my lids because I'm gonna do a quick eye look just to kind of do like a Charlotte Charlotte face, if you will, just to take out the color from the eyeshadow I had on previously. Okay, the tackiness is, I think it's gone. Oh, what do we think, friends? The texture is not too bad, but I do agree with Wayne that you have to be very careful with how much you apply. Like, this is not a foundation you could layer like pats, okay? This is a totally different texture. You gotta go in easy on the first application. Less is more for sure. And work that small amount of product initially as best as you can, and then add from there. Definitely be very conservative with your first application. I could also play with mixing it with my Hollywood, Hollywood Flawless Filter. This is in number three. I'm just gonna dot it high on the cheekbones use that create a little more light there now with her airbrush flawless finish this is an iconic product uh number two with my sonuji inochige pro just lightly tapping the under eyes this doesn't need a lot of powder because since we applied the foundation as our under eye concealer it dried down pretty matte and it doesn't really need the foundation that is on the rest of my face powdering i mean i would go in very very lightly with loose powder uh maybe less than what you usually will apply with another foundation because again this does dry down pretty matte just to add in a little bit of warmth i'm going in with her glowgasm palette in lovegasm with the bronze shade so Niji. Faith Pro. Getting that on the hollows of my cheeks is great with powder. That looks pretty smooth without us really setting. Like I lightly set with the airbrush uh, pressed powder. I didn't really go ham on that portion of my face. So that's good to know. Just a little bit of her Glowgasm Beauty Light Wand. This is in the shade Pink Gasm. Punching some on the back of my hand first and then lightly pressing that on to the cheeks. I'll have to use that more often. It is such a beautiful product. I hate the squeezy tube. It drives me nuts, but the product itself, gorgeous. Definitely why not? Let's go in with the highlighter shade from the Love Gasm Palette Smasonji Fan Pro. Right over the Hollywood Flawless Filter. Very nice. Now, this was a gift, so thank you so much. You know who you are. Her Dream Gasm Eyeshadow Palette. Uh, I was so thankful to receive this. Uh, I decided, you know, since we're gonna do all Charlotte Silberry, let's, let's do the Charlotte Silberry. First, I'm taking her Star Gold Mesmerized Pot, my Isom W21, pulling that over the lid and just using my finger to zhuzh. Taking the darkest color in Dreamgasm with my refer number 15, pulling that through the crease and out a corner. Taking the gold shade from Dreamgasm, pressing it over the star gold mesmerized color we applied initially. Isom W21 with this pink shade, hitting the inner part of my lid to add a little more space sparkle then taking that champagne like shade inner part of the eye and a little under the part of the lower lash line i also have her cheek to cheek swish and pop blusher in ecstasy i have the pink gasm glow gasm beauty light wand on but i thought why not just pop a little more blush on top to just set everything so taking that swish and pop pop it right over the fist just rejudge my mascara a little bit. Lip cheat in iconic nude. Kissing lipstick in Hepburn Honey. Quick spritz. And why not? Let's pop into her bar of gold palette really quickly just to make these cheekbones pop off. 
All right, so we have our Charlotte Tilbury face on, friends. I right, we're looking airbrushed and flawless and flawless and all these things. Right now, it is 3.32 p.m. in the afternoon. It has been getting darker sooner because we are in the end of August and the days have already started to change. If I can, I will get back on here maybe around 7 o'clock. I know it's not a long wear test but maybe we can kind of see where we sit in terms of three to four hours of wear right now it looks very good it looks smooth uh around my nose area usually is where it starts to bend and break because of all the uh blowing of the nose and all my sunglass wear and stuff i would just powder extra here for reinforcement but in terms of how the powders are layered especially with the hollywood flawless filter this looks really smooth. The product layered perfectly, I must say. Con about this is the fragrance. Because I have a cold, my nostrils are stuffed, so I can't really smell it right now, obviously because I just can't smell a lot of things right now. But unfortunately, I cannot recommend this if you do have sensitive skin. Fragrance is a huge culprit for reactive skin, getting inflamed, and all these different conditions that fragrance could cause. So I would just be very careful or not use it very often. But you know, if you're fine with fragrance, I, I just wish she didn't put it in here. I mean, fragrance doesn't have any role in makeup or skincare it's just to kind of elevate one's experience when they apply it it's not like alcohol alcohol actually has a role whether it's to serve as a preservative leave a quick dry down stabilize sunscreen filters it has a role but fragrance doesn't have any few other claims from this foundation 98 percent agree that the foundation feels lightweight and comfortable contains air cool for instant fresh feel i don't feel my skin cool yeah, are you feeling cool? I, I guess I have to go back to that. Has a unique CT defense that is designed to limit exposure of the sun to everyday pollutants. I would just apply your antioxidant or your sunscreen. That will be the best protection against sun and pollutants, okay? It is also sweat proof, humidity proof, waterproof, and transfer resistant. So with all those claims in mind, I will make sure to remember them when I'm evaluating how this foundation wears for the three hours. I will also wrap up with my final thoughts at the end of the video. Again, those timestamps will be down below if you just wish to skip over and see what I think about it. And yeah, I'll see you back here in a bit. Well, hello there. It is now 7.23. Let me get this clock up for you. Now it's 7.24. I am right in front of a window. I am trying to take advantage of any lasting daylight that we have. Just so you guys can see how the foundation looks. Now, I know by no means this is an appropriate wear test. But I thought we could take advantage and see where we stand around three hours or so. I will most certainly wear this foundation again tomorrow. And I am looking to film a roundup video of all the most recent foundations and my thoughts on them overall. And I will go more in depth about how I feel about the Airbrush Flawless. Forgive my nose, I've been blowing it like crazy and I had to put some CeraVe on it because it was getting raw. And this is how it looks so far. I mean, I love how my skin feels and I love how it looks. If I were to immediately think of a cheaper dupe, it will be the NYX Can't Stop Won't Stop. This foundation reminds me of that formula in terms of it being matte but not dry looking it holding up well throughout the day and looking fabulous under powders or anything you apply on it for that matter now a quick note about some of these skincare claims i looked into some of the ingredients and in regards to the ct defense that is designed to limit exposure of the skin to everyday pollutants there is an ingredient in here called aodactylum tricornatum extract i found this description on truthandaging.com it is an algae extract also humectant it is a soothing agent and it is thought but not confirmed to protect and repair age and uv reducing damage to proteins okay but unfortunately that ingredient is number 23. now in regards to it looking flawless and poreless being lightweight and comfortable there is an ingredient called acetyl tetrapeptide 11. this is from paulischoice.com it helps skin become healthier by interacting with a signaling protein in skin surface that addresses how it looks and feels okay followed by acetyl tetrapeptide tetrapeptide 9. Hello, are you even in frame? This visibly restores skin's natural support, including a specialized protein known as lumicin 
which helps keep skin smooth and taut. These, hello, you, you see my microphone. These are 24 and 25 on the ingredient list. Now, here's my thought about skincare and makeup. You can't ace it all. It's either one or the other for me. I understand the appeal of including skincare benefits in one's makeup formula. Get it all in at one application, not having to apply several for those skincare benefits. And not that they're lying, those ingredients perhaps individually and perhaps formulated higher on the ingredient deck might in fact have these benefits that Charlotte is claiming that her foundation also has. But because they're so low on the ingredient list, I highly doubt that they're going to have a huge positive effect on your skin even like i said over a long period of time but they don't have to say that all they can say is that these ingredients individually are capable of these benefits now whether they will deliver those benefits we don't know and they technically don't have to guarantee that they could just say hey these are what these ingredients do are they gonna work i don't know but that's this is what they do so that's all you need to know. And also on the website, I appreciate how transparent they are. They tested, for the moisturization claim, they tested 30 men and women, that's not a lot. For the air cool, they tested that technology on 311 men and women over the course of eight weeks. And for the CT defense, they tested that on 22 women, but that's not a lot of women. I wonder why just women and not men too, interesting. I think Charlotte and her team are doing their best to convince the consumer that this is in fact a miracle product. And again, I know this is sent to me, so my perspective is different because I did not pay for this myself. I have to put myself in a mind space to ask, hey, would I purchase this? I would not purchase this because of the inclusion of fragrance. That is my ingredient bias. Some people have silicone ingredient bias, alcohol ingredient bias. There's just a, a one ingredient that will turn someone off. I decided to still review it because I think it will be helpful for you guys because who knows, maybe you don't care about fragrance and you need someone similar in your skin tone to try this foundation out before you make the plunge again if you don't care about fragrance then this is a great foundation in terms of the high price point i think you are paying for packaging i'm not sure if you're paying for these skincare benefits because again these ingredients are not high on the ingredient deck and you know marketing and cosmetics costs a penny so that's probably why it's so expensive and i know a lot of you might be comparing this to pats this is totally different from pats foundation this dries down more matte than pats this is not layerable like pat and to be quite frank i don't think charlotte's formula is ideal for mature skin although she has a lot of mature women on her campaign i think pats foundation is a lot more appropriate formula for more mature skin simply because it looks like skin whereas this dries down pretty matte although since it had time to kind of chill out, it doesn't look too bad. But again, I'm going to try this on again tomorrow and I will do my roundup foundation video for you guys. This is currently sold on charlottetilbury.com. I'm not sure if it is in fact available on beautylish.com at the moment. It's definitely not available at Sephora as of now. So I will leave that link down below if you care just to check it out, shop it out see what you like and yeah thank you so much for joining me on this first impressions i hope this helped and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and until then i'll see you on here again with another first impressions review multi-look video or favorites list take care and i'll see you again soon